Father, we come to you this evening as humbly as we know how, thanking you for all the blessings you bestow upon us as a city. We ask you to continue to give us the ability to do this job in a fair and just manner. We also ask you to go into the homes of those persons who are less fortunate, those persons who don't have the things that they need just to operate on a daily basis. We ask you to continue to bless this city, bless our residents, and bless this council. These and all the blessings we ask in that name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Ms. Doyle? Here. Ms. Graves? Here. Ms. Johnson? Here. Ms. McClellan? Here. Mr. Riddick? Here. Mr. Spiegel? Here. Mr. Thomas? Here. Mr. Alexander? Here. Uh, the motion is to dispense with the reading of the minutes of our previous meeting. Ms. Doyle? Aye. Mrs. Graves? Aye. Mrs. Johnson? Aye. Ms. McClellan? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Mr. Alexander? <clears throat> Aye. Mr. Clerk, please read the resolution certifying the closed meeting. I have a resolution certifying a closed meeting of the Council of the City of Norfolk in accordance with the provisions of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act. Adopt the resolution. Mrs. Doyle? Aye. Mrs. Graves? Aye. Mrs. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. McClellan? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Mr. Alexander? Aye. Well, good evening. For the benefit of those who do not regularly attend our council meetings, our procedure is to first take up ceremony items, and we have a few. Next, we'll take up public hearings, then the consent agenda, which will be voted on in a block. If any member of the council or the public wishes to discuss an item, it will be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately. Following the consent agenda, we will take up the regular agenda items in the order as they appear on the docket. Upon the completion of the agenda, we will then take up any new business to come before the council. To address the council, you should <coughs> register to speak prior to 6.50 p.m., outside of the council chamber. When your name is called, please come to the podium, state your name, <coughs> your address, and please limit your comments to three minutes. First, I would like the senior coordinator of athletics, Stephen Schuttmiller, uh, to come with Lake Teller girls basketball team. Please come to the podium. Stand right there, right through the podium there. I'm going to come down to visit you in a minute. I want to read something, and then I'll come down to be with you. So, uh, Lake Teller Girls, Class 4 State Champions, uh, and also in a minute we'll have uh, the Maury uh, Boys, Class 5 uh, State Champions, to come. But here is uh, the, uh, the resolution uh, that we're going to, to read. It reads, whereas, under the leadership of head coach Sandra Sawyer, the Lake Teller High School girls basketball team won their fourth state title with their 2019 Virginia High School League Class 4 state championship victory. And whereas, sporting an outstanding record of 27-1, and mm -hmm. the Titans defeated Pulaski County High School Cougars an impressive 61-29 win. And whereas, despite obstacles faced throughout the season, the players joined forces, surpassed last year's performance, and reestablished themselves among the state's most promising athletes. And whereas, the Lake Teller Titans, since earning their first state title in 2010, have continued to display exceptional athletic ability, team effort, sportsmanship, and drive. Such achievements made by student athletes and their dedicated coaching staff and an inspiration to our city. Now, therefore, be it resolved, Section 1, 
that in recognition of this extraordinary accomplishment, the Council of the City of Norfolk hereby extends heartly congratulations to Coach Sawyer and the Lake Teller High School girls basketball right. team on the occasion of their fourth BHSL state <laughs> championship win, Section 2, that this, rec this resolution be recorded in the permanent proceedings of the City Council and that a copy be presented to Coach Sawyer and to her team and staff. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Yes, it gives me great pleasure. Mrs. Doyle. Congratulations. Aye. Mrs. Graves. Congratulations, ladies. Aye. Mrs. Johnson. Fantastic. Awesome scholars. Mrs. McClellan. Okay, Superwoman. <laughs> Way to go. Aye. Mr. Riddick. Congratulations. You look so neat. <laughs> Mr. Smeagol. Outstanding job. Aye. Mr. Thomas. Aye. And Mr. Alexander. As the only Titan, I. Short guy. Here we go. All right, all right, shut Miller. <laughs> all right. Thank you. I am. <laughs> Only be before you a minute. I First of all, I do want to give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is definitely a uh, favorite on my team, my players, uh, the parents, our administration at Lake Taylor. Um, throughout the years, it's basically it's been a process, and I, I'm just grateful that everybody has trusted the process, and uh, we've been able to uh, be successful with uh, only four state championships since I've been there, but each year has been a success. Um, this year we have three seniors, and all three of them will be um, extending their college career, extending their career in college on the next level. So that's also a plus. Um, special thanks to our principal, Ms. Wade Jenkins, for everything she's done. Our athletic director, Bobby Pannenbacher, and of course, Mr. C. Steve Setmiller, who, man, he, he just, he keeps us going, and I appreciate it. And I thank all of you, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Titan, City Council, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. And all the parents, uh, all of the parents who are here with their student athletes, please stand, all the parents uh, from Lake Taylor, mm -hmm. Guardians parents, thank you very much for being here. Uh, we also have with us this evening the Maury High School boys basketball team. Coach all right. Randy, all right. Uh, a, a, a plumber and his team, uh, please come to the podium, coach and team. Have a, res a resolution for you as well. Now, Courtney, this came from, she didn't want to hear it. She, she no, it is surprising, you're right. Andrew just replied. I didn't want to read no, 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 it. No, my son was, I was on this team. You are. Oh. So, uh, yeah. I'm the pilot. Uh, um, Resolution, whereas under the leadership of head coach Brandon uh, Plummer, the Maury High School boys basketball team won their first state title since 1927. We have the principal here as well. Um, with the 2019 Virginia High School League Class 5 state championship victory, and whereas in a remarkable 57-49 win, the Commodores rose to the challenge and ended a successful 25-3 season in challenging in a challenging match against Freedom High School South Friday. And whereas as a team, the Commodores displayed an inspiring level of skill, strategy, persistence, teamwork, and passion for basketball as they revived Maury's historic reputation as a state champion. And whereas every player, staff member, and supporter of Maury High School Commodores should be proud of this momentous achievement. And therefore, be it resolved, Section 1, that in recognition of this extraordinary accomplishment, 
that the Council of the City of Norfolk hereby extends heartly congratulations <coughs> to Coach Palmer and, and the Maury High School Commodores boys basketball team on this occasion of their 2019 BHSL state championship win and two, that this resolution be recorded in the permanent proceedings of the city council and let a copy be presented to coach and his team and staff. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Sure, adopt the resolution, Mrs. Doyle. Principal Berg, thank you for being here tonight. Thanks for your strong leadership and to the coach, congratulations and congratulations to all of you. Aye. Mrs. Graves. Congratulations, aye. Mrs. Johnson. Congratulations, and I am a proud Commodore. <laughs> Senior <laughs> class president. <laughs> Mrs. McClellan. Aye. Well, I call them super women, so you guys are the super men. <laughs> so congratulations as a mom of a, a former teammate. I'm really, really proud of you, so aye. Mr. Riddick. Congratulations, team. Mr. Smeagle. Awesome job, and I'd um, love to see a match between oh! you guys to see uh, the state champions who would win. Yeah. Uh, Titan, Titan said bring it on. <laughs> Mr. Thomas. Aye. Mr. Alexander. Aye. Mamie, please join me. Council, please rise. Now they're really not going to see me. <laughs> oh, yeah, you, you probably need to be in the middle here. I need to be in the middle. Yeah, you time. do. You need to be in the middle so they can see you. Yeah. Can the short okay. basketball players go to the side, please? <laughs> Yeah. Staff artist is bursted about probably two or three feet up in the air. First of all, I want to say thank you for having us out tonight. Um, thanks to my administration. Uh, on behalf of myself and my administration, Ms. Bird, my athletic director, um, Mr. Boyd, uh, we are just so thankful to be supported by such amazing city officials. Um, for us to be able to not just be students, but being student athletes, to be able to show our talents and our abilities across the state, we want to say thank you for you know supporting us. Um, I know it's been a long time. It's been a long time. I don't know how many of us in here were born when the last Mr. time we won one. Oh, <laughs> but I tell you what, I know I wasn't told that. <laughs> but it's just, just a great feeling to have these guys stand behind me and support me, me being just 30 years old and believing in what I was telling them to help them grow as men. Because that's what it's about, not just being an athlete, but having these guys grow as men. And that's my glory. So I just want to say thank you again for having us. And all right, good night. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Now, um, I would like for Councilman McCullen and Mr. Smith to go to the podium and all Wahoos, anyone who attended <laughs> UVA, uh, undergrad or grad, please go to the podium. I want to make a any UVA. In the audience, anyone? Yeah, the in the there we go. Come, come on, on up, you Come on up. All right. Just you barely got out. Is that still count? Chris? Come on. <laughs> up. I got my. I got my UVA ring today. <laughs> so, um, thank you. Do we get to sing the good old songs? <laughs> no. No. Uh, so, uh, we, we, we're hopefully we're the first council uh, in the country uh, to pass a resolution recognizing the accomplishments of the coach of Coach Tony Bennett and the University of Virginia men's basketball team in their NCAA National Championship win. Um, so, we have a resolution. Whereas, the Virginia Cavaliers man ba men's basketball program, under the leadership of head coach Tony Bennett, represents the University of Virginia in the Athletic Coast Conference Division I of the National Collegiate Athletic Association, and whereas, the Wahoos, the Hoos, mm -hmm. as they are unofficially known, have played in 23 NCAA tournaments, advancing to the Elite Eight seven times, and whereas, after a devastating first round loss in 2018, mm -hmm. the Cavaliers made a remarkable comeback mm -hmm. and fought their way into March Madness, Final Four, and 2019. Whereas, the jaw 
clinching victory against Auburn University on April the 6th placed the team in the first ever Division I men's basketball national championship game and whereas from beginning to end. The Cavaliers displayed extreme passion, heart, and grit, and in the last seconds of overtime, secured their historic win over Texas Tech. They are therefore be it resolved, Section 1, that in recognition of this extraordinary accomplishment that the Council of the City of Norfolk, our citizens, the University of Virginia supporters, and alumni hereby extend heartly congratulations to Coach Bennett and the University of Virginia's man bas men's basketball team on the occasion of their first NCAA National Championship, Section 2, that this resolution be recorded in the permanent proceedings of the City Council that a copy be presented to UVA alumni, Councilwoman Andrew McClellan and Doug Smith. Stay right there, I'm coming down. So on behalf of uh, all the Wahoos in Norfolk uh, and around the country and the world, we are so excited. Um, what an incredible opportunity to showcase a, an amazing university. I'm a proud graduate, um, very proud last night, very, very proud of the university and its academics and its honor. And so on behalf of Mr. Jefferson, Wahoo Law. <laughs> all right. Mr. Clark, call the roll. Adopt the resolution, Mrs. Doyle. Aye. Mrs. Graves. Aye. Mrs. Johnson. Aye. Mrs. McClellan. Aye. Mr. Riddick. Aye. Mr. Smeagol. Aye. Mr. Thomas. Aye. Mr. Alexander. Aye. Thank you all for coming. Uh, we're going to uh, start our agenda. You're, you're happy to stay, but if you would like to, uh, to be dismissed, this is your opportunity to do so. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. I said homework. Thank you. I was trying to read this shirt. It said, uh, No. It looks, they look very nice. It's ring season. And if, it's ring season. if anyone wishes to yeah. come closer, this is your opportunity. Uh, Danny or Ellis, Ryan. <laughs> You're welcome. Right. Oh, we didn't parents, oh, all the parents, I do apologize. Parents of the Commodores, please raise your hands so we can say good. thank you for being here. Right. Okay, Mr. Clerk, PH1. Yes, Mr. President. I've, PH1 is a matter of a public hearing scheduled this day under the state law. Public notice having been inserted in the local press by the city clerk on the application of James Flanagan for a change of zoning from industrial light to multifamily apartment complex on property located at 1045, 1063, 1065, and the south side of 38th Street. And by 6-0 vote, Planning Commission recommends approval. Clerk, please call the please, oh, please call the roll. I have an ordinance to rezone properties located at 1045, 1960, what should be 1063, and 1065 and the south side of 38th Street from industrial light district to multifamily apartment complex. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mrs. Doyle? Aye. Mrs. Graves? Aye. Mrs. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. McClellan? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Mr. Alexander? Aye. PH2? PH2 is a public hearing scheduled this day under the state law public notice having been inserted in the local press by the city clerk to hear comments approving a purchase and sale agreement between the city of Norfolk as seller and Beacon LLC as purchaser authorizing the conveyance of real property located at 400 Granby Street in the city of Norfolk to Beacon Norfolk LLC and authorizing a lease agreement between Beacon Norfolk LLC as landlord and the city of Norfolk as tenant. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. I have an ordinance approving this purchase and sale agreement between the city of Norfolk as seller and Beacon Norfolk LLC as purchaser, authorizing the conveyance of real property located at 400 Granby Street 
in the city of Norfolk to Beacon Norfolk LLC and authorizing a lease agreement between Beacon Norfolk LLC as landlord and the city of Norfolk as tenant. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Ms. Doyle? Aye. Ms. Graves? Aye. Ms. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. McClellan? I think this is going to be a real transformational project for the city. Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Mr. Alexander? Aye. Mr. Clerk, C1 through C9 will be considered in a block. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinances and adopt the consent <coughs> agenda. Mrs. Doyle? Aye. Mrs. Graves? Aye. Mrs. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. McClellan? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Mr. Thomas? <coughs> Aye. Mr. Alexander? Aye. Mr. Clerk, R1. R1 is an ordinance accepting the bid submitted by Old Dominion Real Estate Foundation for a lease with a t term of 10 years with the option to renew the lease for one additional five-year period for the premises located at 112 and 124 Bank Street in the city of Norfolk, authorizing the city manager to execute a lease on behalf of the city and authorizing the expenditure of a sum of up to $200,000 from funds heretofore appropriated for a tenant improvement allowance. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mrs. Doyle? Aye. Mrs. Graves? Aye. Mrs. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. McClellan? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Mr. Alexander? Aye. <coughs> R2. R2 is an ordinance approving a right of entry permitting Old Dominion Real Estate Foundation to go upon and use the property located at 112 and 124 Bank Street for the purpose of initiating construction and preparation for leasing the space. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mrs. Doyle? Aye. Mrs. Graves? Aye. Mrs. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. McClellan? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Mr. Alexander? Aye. R3? R3 is an ordinance granting a conditional use permit to authorize the operation of a, of a religious institution and a child daycare center at Colonial Heights Church of Christ on property located at 831 Mayfield Avenue and 833 Marvin Avenue. And by a 6 0 vote, Planning Commission recommends approval. Yes, Eric Sherwood. Please. Well, yes, please. Come to the podium. Um, Eric Sherwood, 8437 Benningfield Court, Norfolk, Virginia, 23503. And I uh, checked on the box. I'm just here to answer any questions. Um, thank you. Um, staff, Mr. Uh, Newcomb or, um, or Ms. Newcomb, please come. Stand by for a question, sir. You may have a seat at the first seat there. And stand by for questions. Yes, sir. Um, uh, I believe that the uh, Planning Commission recommended uh, this to the, to, the, to the council. However, uh, the staff uh, has some concern and can you please refresh uh, the council of the concerns that's coming from the administration? The, uh, the planning commission and the staff could currently recommended approval subject to several conditions. They're contained in the ordinance that you're about to vote on. And with those conditions, there is, there is no opposition to it. Yes, sir. Okay. Mr. Sherwood, Sher Sher you, you accept, you accept the, the conditions in yeah. the? You do, yes, you? we accept the conditions. All right. And Mr. Mr. Smigel? And Lenny, I know I talked about the landscaping and given a certain time period. There's 180 the days on it here. Okay. And we'll certainly work with them on if there's an extension needed. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Sherwood. Thank you for coming. Thanks. Mr. Clark, please call the roll. Sure. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mrs. Doyle? Aye. Mrs. Graves? Aye. Mrs. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. McClellan? I'd have forgotten who I was. I <laughs> <laughs> sat late last night. I was up really late. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Riddick. Aye. Mr. Smeagle. Aye. Mr. Thomas. Aye. Mr. Alexander. Aye. R4. R4 is an ordinance authorizing the city manager to negotiate an agreement in substantial conformity with the terms and conditions of the attached easement purchase agreement for the purpose of <clears throat> construction and maintaining a berm and drainage at 2623 Kimball Terrace in the city of Norfolk. <clears throat> for the Ohio Creek Watershed Improvement Project, authorizing the purchase of said easement and authorizing the expenditure of a sum of up to $10,300 for such purpose from funds heretofore appropriated. Mr. Clerk, call Dispense the roll. with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt Mrs. Doyle. Aye. Mrs. Graves. Aye. Mrs. Johnson. Aye. Mrs. McClellan. Aye. Mr. Riddick. Aye. Mr. Smeagle. Aye. Mr. Thomas. Aye. Mr. Alexander. Aye. R5. R5 is an ordinance authorizing the city manager to negotiate an agreement in substantial conformity with the terms and conditions of the attached easement purchase agreement 
for the purpose of drainage, construction, and maintenance of a berm at 730 Fowler Street in the City of Norfolk for the Ohio Creek Watershed Improvement Project, authorizing the purchase of said agreement, easement, and authorizing the expenditure of up to a sum of $12,844 for such purpose from funds heretofore appropriated. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Doyle? Aye. Mrs. Graves? Aye. Mrs. Johnson? Aye. Mr. McClellan? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Mr. Alexander? Aye. R6? R6 is an ordinance authorizing the institution of the capital access program designed to stimulate inclusive economic growth. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mrs. Doyle? I want to thank Economic Development for putting this program together. I think it's going to be great for business in the city of Norfolk, and I've gotten several calls. So, Sean Washington, expect your personal cell phone to be ringing. I put your number out there. So, aye. Mrs. Graves? Aye. Mrs. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. McClellan? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Mr. Alexander? Aye. R7? R7 is an ordinance accepting the conveyance by Norfolk Southern Railway Company of unused rail tracks existing in the right-of-way of Raleigh Avenue west of Orpac Street. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mrs. Doyle? Aye. Mrs. Graves? Aye. Mrs. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. McClellan? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Mr. Alexander? Aye. R8 is an ordinance authorizing the conversion of general obligation bonds to wastewater revenue bonds and the issuance by the City of Norfolk, Virginia of such wastewater system revenue bonds. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mrs. Doyle? Aye. Ms. Graves? Aye. Mrs. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. McClellan? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Mr. Alexander? Aye. R9? R9 is an ordinance approving a First Amendment to garage parking agreement between the City of Norfolk and S.C. Royster, LLC, and authorizing the city manager to execute the First Amendment to garage parking agreement on behalf of the city of Norfolk. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mrs. Doyle? Aye. Mrs. Graves? Aye. Mrs. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. McClellan? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Mr. Alexander? Aye. R10. R10 is an ordinance appropriating $433,315.30 in program income generated by the United States Housing and Urban Development Home Investment Partnership Program grant and authorizing the expenditure of the program income in conformity with the requirements of the grant. Ellis W. James. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My name is Ellis W. James. I reside at 2021 Ken Lake Place here in the city of Norfolk. As you know, quite often I pick out items on the agenda that I feel it's important to show residents and taxpayers support for. In this particular situation, R10 is dealing with something that is extremely important, as I'm sure each of you knows, and I know that the city manager knows this. Um, it is an authorization for $433,315.30, and it is dealing with the housing and urban development Organization okay. Home Investment Partnership Program Grant. It is of concern to me that a taxpayer like myself would come forward to indicate support for this funding and this grant especially in view of the Mickey Mousing around that's going on in the current administration. HUD has not been exempt from this unfortunate situation. And so I think it's extremely important, not only for the council to vote for the program and the funding, but to pay close attention to any kind of nonsense and interference that might occur uh, because of the strategic 
importance of this item. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. James. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Dispense with the charter requirement for Eden Ordinance to adopt Mrs. Doyle. Aye. Mrs. Graves. Um, I just want to say on this particular um, uh, item, is I, I don't know how many people do know, but hopefully they'll know now, is uh, this program is very um, important to helping individuals who are low moderate income individuals become homeowners and Norfolk has the highest amount of grant money um, through the Norfolk Redevelopment and Housing Authority. They have $40,000 available in grant funds that do not have to be paid back, that do not have to be paid back for individuals who qualify as first time home buyers. And so um, the proceeds from this help the help NRHA to continue that work. And then the federal funds for the $40,000 grant, there's income restrictions um, for it. There are some other guidelines that have to be met, but this, um, but Norfolk has the most money. Other cities do offer the program. Portsmouth, Chesapeake, I'm not 100% sure about Virginia Beach, but Norfolk has the most amount of money and that is $40,000. So that helps individuals who um, would otherwise be possibly barred out of purchasing because their purchase power was limited. This gives them um, this particular program um, through the home home program and home net funds gives them the opportunity to be able to increase their purchase power and be able to become um, first time homeowners. And it doesn't impact their debt to income ratios and it doesn't put them in a position where they are overextended. So um, this is a great program, and if there are folks who are out there who want to become first-time home buyers, they need to call NRHA and inquire about what the requirements are for them to um, get access to the grant funding because we always have money left over that rolls over, and we always give away more money than anybody else. So if you want to be a first-time home buyer, this is a great opportunity. I vote aye. Thank you. Mrs. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. McClellan? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Mr. Alexander? Aye. R11. R11 is a resolution requesting the Virginia Department of Transportation accept certain additional city streets from municipal assistance payments and to remove some streets from the eligible list pursuant to section 33.1 through 41.1 of the Code of Virginia 1950 as amended. Adopt the resolution. Mrs. Doyle? Aye. Mrs. Graves? Aye. Mrs. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. McClellan? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Mr. Alexander? Aye. R12? R12 is an ordinance approving the third amendment to lease between the City of Norfolk as landlord and the Muddy Paw Grooming and Retail Store LLC as tenant so as to reduce the rent due to the city during the remainder of the term and authorizing the city manager to execute the third amendment to the lease on behalf of the city of Norfolk. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt Mrs. Doyle. Aye. Mrs. Graves. Aye. Mrs. Johnson. Aye. Mrs. McClellan. Aye. Mr. Riddick. Aye. Mr. Smeagol. Aye. Mr. Thomas. Aye. Mr. Alexander. Aye. R13. Yeah. R13 is an ordinance appointing Tammy Dantzler as city auditor. Oh. Mr. Dispense Dantzler. with. Ms. Dancer is here. Yes, she is. Mr. Clerk, go right on. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and appoint the city auditor. Ms. Doyle? Aye. Ms. Graves? I think it's probably one of the best eyes I've ever made. Aye. Mrs. Johnson? Congratulations. Aye. Ms. McClellan? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Congratulations. We're looking forward to continuing working with you and the great stuff you've already been doing. Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Mr. Alexander? All right, Ms. Dancer, will you please stand that the uh, Citizens of Norfolk see our right. doctor. Mr. Clark, and that's have... all I have, Mr. All right, President. under new business, uh, Alex, Alex Pincus is going to come. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and City Council. Um, thank you very much for letting me be here. For the record, I'm Alex Pincus. My address is 5416 Powhatan Avenue. I'm here to speak about something I'm sure you all know I'm very passionate about. Some might be, some may say obsessed, but in any case, it's about the Norfolk Native Festival. Um, as you may be aware, or hopefully are aware, this year marks the Norfolk Native Festival 66th annual celebration. And it also coincides with the 70th anniversary of the NATO alliance. Uh, 
Our city's festival is the longest continuous running festival in one of the longest, I should say, in the nation. And it's the only one that celebrates the NATO alliance. Uh, since it was founded back in 1953, uh, the festival has endeavored to serve the mission, which was to honor and promote the international influence that the NATO alliance brings to our city. And uh, we feel like we've done that pretty well over these years. Uh, it's evolved quite a bit. It used to have a lot of pomp and circumstance with the pageantry of the old uh, Azalea Festival Queen and its court. And we now have quite a few uh, different programs that include a lot of cultural events, as well as programs for educational programs for our students and uh, opportunities for our industries. I wanted to take the opportunity tonight just to highlight a few of the things that would be available. Uh, they're open to the public that are coming up for this season at the end of this month, starting on April 25th and running through the 29th. On the 25th of April, Thursday evening, in the afternoon, we will be hold, hosting with the uh, Virginia Arts Festival and the Virginia International Tattoo and the NATO Command, the ceremonial uh, uh, flag raising ceremony in Scope Plaza, followed by the NATO Night at the Tattoo. It's a wonderful event attended by thousands and it's a, a, a not to miss. Uh, the next uh, day is a kind of a day off, but on Friday we kick off our Parade of Nations. It's our 66th annual for that and uh, my 20th of directing that parade. Uh, and of course, you are all welcome to be uh, attending and be our guests uh, as the uh, VIPs as well. Uh, Mr. Mayor, we'd like for you to be our honorary uh, grand chair chairman uh, for the parade and attend and host our NATO command in the VIP tent. We follow that with the NATO uh, fest in our international village in Town Point Park. The next day, something brand new that we're hosting is in Powhatan Field is an exhibition match between the Norfolk Blues and the Cannes Pacifique, which is the French Polynesian Army uh, uh, rugby team, mm. Army uh, rugby team, which will be hosted at the Powhatan Fields, free, open to the public, and should uh, be quite a, um, a spectacle. The uh, Polynesian Army are known for their ceremonial haka dance that they do to intimidate the other teams. But uh, in any case, we hope that you'll attend that. The following night is probably the biggest thing, and that is the World Affairs Council dinner, where we will be hosting uh, Kay Bailey Hutchinson, hmm. the uh, US ambassador to NATO. So we hope that you will come. Each of you have received a packet. And in there is some more specifics about the invitations and the uh, things. We hope that you'll come be our host, be our ambassadors. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Thank you very much. Uh, Glenn Kovas. 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 Followed by Beth Castuel. Castuel. I know. Uh, I'm Glenn Kovacs. My address is 114 Orleans Circle. Zip is 23509. Uh, I'm here to address the council and ask the mayor for a little consideration regarding the Ocean View Diner. Uh, the former restaurateur, I know it's hard enough to run a restaurant as it is. Uh, a small local independent company with local people operating are now up against the city and a possible eviction because of a sale. And I'd just like to ask the council to look into this a little more deeply. Let's let's try to find a win-win situation for the city and the community. Uh, I've, I've been going there since uh, it's mixed pancakes, uh, shipwreck sallies, now it's the OB diner, and it's, it's it's been an integral part of the Ocean View area right there. Uh, a lot of business people bring their clients there. People from out of town come there every time they're here. and. Uh, they're in the process of trying to relocate, but their their hands are tied, and they could use some help. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Is Beth here? Hello, welcome. Hi, um, I'm Beth Caggio. I'm 3719 Granby Street, and. And um, I've come tonight to introduce the Ocean View Diner to those who already don't know us and to ask the city help and to facilitate our move to a new location. 
Um, I'm very uncomfortable speaking in public, but I am passionate about the, the future of the diner. I know that this is a necessary evening. Um, I have three points I'd like to share with you. One, we are not just bacon and eggs. We have customers that come in every day and many more that come in every weekend. We, uh, and if we're not swamped, they will linger. They come for meetings and real estate deals and birthday parties. Uh, we've had a group that came in after their beach wedding and another one of a regular customer after her brother's memorial service. And two, the sellers of the property we rent currently, Greenies and the Beach Pub will benefit monetarily from these sales, which they should. And the Civic Association will benefit <coughs> from, a move, from more parking, more beach access, and a clearer vista. But we will not benefit. We will suffer from the loss of our business. Number three, we collect and deliver revenue to the city in the form of meals tax every month, close to $30,000 in our first 15 months of operation. If we move to a new location, that will continue and most likely increase. We've been told the city cannot help us because they can't help everybody. But when we opened, we asked no one for help. We are self-financed. We went it all alone. The difference now is we are being forced to pick up and relocate. And I think, and many Ocean View residents would agree with me, it would be in the best interest for the city to help us with our move. We are a small, locally owned business. We live in Norfolk. Our six employees live in Norfolk. Uh, most of our customers are from Norfolk. And to our outer town customers, we are an ambassador for the city and to Norfolk, for the city of Norfolk, and mostly to Ocean View. Uh, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Elizabeth Wells. Hi. I too am very nervous to speak, but also am very passionate about the Ocean View Diner. My name is Elizabeth Wells. I live at 9633 Warwick Avenue um, in Ocean View, two blocks from the diner. Um, I work there and have since we opened. We've striven over the past year and a half to be really good neighbors in our Ocean View community. Um, we know most of our customers by name, and if we don't know you by name, we usually do by your second or third visit. Um, we've watched our customers' children grow, new grandchildren, their families grow. We've grieved, as you heard, with uh, losses, as they have grieved with us in losses. Um, Norfolk's finest police department in the world come in and eat with us, as they do the fire department. And we also have NATO members that gather there on a regular basis. We are a safe haven in the storm and a home-cooked meal and friendship to sailors who are away from home, missing mom and dad, and they come in and see us because we care about our community, we care about the diner, and we care about Ocean View. So we implore you to please reconsider and help us relocate in Ocean View and keep this wonderful restaurant open. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Smeagle? Yeah. Um, I want to thank everybody who came down to, in support of OV Diner. And um, Councilwoman McClellan and I had a wonderful meeting with Beth, the owner, um, in February. And I'm, we were a little bit unclear and unsure because we started getting contacted by constituents because of a sign that was posted in the restaurant that said that city council has given us an ultimatum to sign a lease for six months with no financial assistance or legal recourse or be evicted immediately. However, um, council did offer to do um, lease free for six months. Um, and I, that's what we're not understanding, that we did make an offer to assist with the transition. Um, and we were under the impression that Beth um, that was uh, happy about this, um, that we were able to make this work out and actually extend this for six months because this is owned by somebody else. Um, with a, uh, where that owner can evict um, the restaurant without even us actually involved in it. Um, but there was an offer made, and we were kind of confused when we saw that happening, that all of a sudden now that there's a mention that there is no financial assistance, but the not paying the rent for six months um, is our offer, the help with the transition to the new location um, since payment wouldn't have to be made. And normally, 
uh, we wouldn't do that because we're not in the business of being landlords. We don't like doing that, but we, we recognize um, the need um, for OV Diner to stay in Ocean View, and we were happy that she was able to find another location and that this would be that help with that transition. In addition, um, there were some additional resources provided of um, possible grants that the city had just rolled out um, to help that the owner could also look in as well. And I know Councilwoman McClellan put that together and sent that. Um, so we are confused and we, we verified with the city attorney's office that that offer was still um, presented for the six months of um, no payments on the lease. Uh, but we do wanna make sure that everybody's aware of that, that it isn't, that we're not offering, that was a, um, a, a a little bit of assistance. I don't know if Councilwoman McClellan wanted to add anything to that. No, I mean, I think that's accurate. And, um, you know, as a, as a recovering entrepreneur, a small business person, we, you know, I understand it's hard to pay rent. It's hard to pay for your staff. I get that. And thus we were, and what we had heard was you didn't have enough time to find a new location, couldn't leave. Um, it were, we, were, we were working on it. There might be something in the works. I think when we met in February, you said there was a, a possible location at that time. So I don't know if you've progressed since that point. Um, so that's Please. that's where that's where we um, stood, and I and I had uh, emailed uh, Ms. Caggio this this information. I've not heard anything back since February until we saw the Facebook post with a sign in the. Uh, there, there's been no line of communication to us of any other concerns you've had. It's been six weeks, and yeah. so it's sort of a, a bit of a shock to us that now we're not doing anything to help. We when in fact we thought we were, and we left that meeting with that impression. Mm -hmm. It was, it was a generous offer to let us stay there while we did move. We did have, we, I think I did indicate that we had found another location you were and, we did, go, and yeah. we did go ahead and sign a lease on okay. that. Um, it was my, when we left that meeting, um, it wasn't clear that, um, to me, that you were offering that we could stay in the building, um, but there would be no other, there would be no other help. And it, I was informed by attorney last week that I needed to sign this release and that would allow us to stay in the property for six months right. rent free right. but it is not a it's not a financial help to us because we are now we'll be paying rent at the new location and we still do not have any the finances to help us build out the kitchen there so that is that is where that's what, we are. That's what's changed in the last that six is, weeks. That, that you is, found a location, that is, and that you we have, have a location. We've signed the lease. Yes, ma'am. Uh, understood. We don't know that. Mm -hmm. We've never been informed of it. You've never I, communicated that I with Mr. Believe the lawyer, I believe our attorney may have communicated that with the city attorney's office. If not, I'm I'm sorely mistaken, and I'm sorry. Yeah, we we've um, not been. In but I I thought that that would been made clear because because we do have an attorney that is doing negotiations. Yeah. But that that's where yeah. the issue is. And yeah. so we, you're to be staying in Ocean View, that's great. Yes, it is. That's great. Thank you. Provided everybody. I can find some money to build, to help me build a kitchen out. Everything else we have, we put forty thousand dollars in because the building was it's empty, it's a shell. Mm -hmm. So we put in forty thousand dollars last year of our own money, two years ago, and we and we built this out. And then now we own all of our equipment, we own all of that, but we have to have a hood put into the new building and we have to have, as you know, it with the health department, we have to have the special washable walls and all of the things in the kitchen itself, mm -hmm. which we will need some financial aid. I can go, I have applied for loans, we have applied for a loan, and I've investigated grants, and the grants that I looked into, we did not qualify for. It's There were stipulations that our restaurant didn't qualify for, and I can go back and redo them again, but that's, that is the situation that we're in. So as of Friday, uh, we were asked to sign a paper, and we were told that we will be evicted. And that's so that's uh, in my frustration. This is where I came. All right, Mr. Pishko. I, I thank you. Um, I, I'm just learning that you've signed a lease, <coughs> and what's not clear to me is when your new lease starts, whether the offer of six months free rents will be effective for you, or whether you're not needing it because you've got a lease commencing where you're paying rent elsewhere. Right. We signed the lease. Um, and um, it, it starts, we gave them the first, we gave them the deposit, which was the first month's rent. And this actual new rent is due on May 1st. So they did give us a month free, but we're now in the two weeks. Because we didn't feel we could go and start taking a wall down and then have to try to negotiate getting out of a lease because we were out of business. Mm -hmm. 
So we, we have not done anything except sign the lease. So, so you've got a lease payment obligation. Mm -hmm. Is it your plan to continue in the current location if, if you're given a lease? Um, Our plan was to leave as soon as possible in the current location. We did not necessarily want to stay there if we have another place that will probably be actually better as far as foot traffic and as far as the ocean view. But um, we... Have, yes, so, so we've, our intention is not to stay for the six months. Our intention is to try to move. And um, the main obstacle, we can be our own contractor. We can get do everything um, legally and with, with all the codes and what have you. But we need some financial aid from somewhere to help us put the hood in and finish off the kitchen. Thank you for coming. Thanks. Uh, Richard Levin. Good evening, Good evening. Mr. Mayor and distinguished council members. It's been a while. <laughs> I'm, um, if I may just share my heart for a moment, as a taxpayer of the city of Norfolk, I understand, and I'll be there tomorrow night. I'm here about mainly a couple of issues, but sidewalks mainly. I understand you all have a quarter of a million dollars in the budget for all the sidewalks for the city of Norfolk. And I got to share with you, it's a ridiculous number. I've been 42 years at 122 West 21st Street. By the way, I'm Richard Levin, 122 West 21st Street, Norfolk. I apologize. Sidewalks are deplorable. My accountant broke her ankle there last year. Then we go to Llewellyn Avenue, which is a gateway into Kent. At 221, the sidewalks are deplorable. When people come to a city, the first thing they notice, and you as a realtor know this, curb appeal, so important. And I'm telling you, it's looking pretty shabby, not just in Ghent, but in other areas of Norfolk. And $250,000 doesn't get it. They came out and repaired a sidewalk at Llewellyn Avenue. I could have done better, and I'm terrible at trying to do something like that. The cement is spread all over the place. <clears throat> and I'm speaking with uh, the public works. They said, we can't higher quality people, action paving is getting these people away because they're paying two or three dollars more an hour. So your in-house staff is rough. I mean, we really need to look at that. I mean, we really do. I, I'm, my taxes are going up 15 percent real estate taxes generally across the board, and I think everybody else is. I pay hundreds of thousands of dollars in real estate taxes. Tuesday mornings came in. It was a large investment. Got asked for nothing. Spent a lot of money there. Helped bring Bonaventure here. They did a beautiful apartment complex on Tywater Drive. Probably a $30 million investment for the city of Norfolk. They didn't ask for 10 cents, not a dime. Monument, who I knew from Richmond, brought in, helped bring in. Didn't bring him by himself. But they have made a huge investment in that corridor. And we're forgetting where this money's coming from. It's coming from the business corridors and from the residents and so forth. We need to put some money back. And I know y'all hands are tied from past administrations. We've made some terrible mistakes as a city, in my, in my opinion. And I know your hands are tied, but please try to find some money. 250,000 is ridiculous. It really is. Thank you, Mr. Levin. Thank you. And one other quick question. I didn't come here for the Ocean View Diner, but that's the other thing. Let's be sensitive to small business in this city, please. You, Let's sir. show some love to them all. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Merle uh, 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 Rutledge.
Hello, my name is Merle Travis Rutledge, Jr. I'm out of Virginia Beach, Virginia. I can't give out my address because I'm a running candidate for governor of Virginia. At this time period, I'm here to talk about the Confederate Monument or any parts of history. I do not feel that the city is making the right decision by removing history. Amongst any statue, portrait, or artifact, whether it's archaeological or whatever, it has a story. A story that which shows perseverance. Regardless of good or bad or whatever symbol that we have out there that still is erected through time, we all have a history and a story that goes with that statue mm. on how we have became better and far removed from social ills in which people are treated differently. We all represent inside this room history. Whether it's good or bad, whether y'all agree or disagree, we all owe it to keep the monuments up, no matter which one. What happens after a while? We start looking back at history and say Dr. King's monument should be taken away. In Danville, they had to learn a hard lesson. They removed one flag and now got the largest flag. First thing once you walk into or drive in the city, that's the first thing you see. And I hope that the city of Norfolk stops at trying to remove any statue, monument, or whatever. Because I'm here just like so many of you are here. Because history got better over time. And we are reminded not to go back to it. But you take it away. What kind of dedication or support or gratitude do others with heritage or history, including our own, have if we take it away? So I asked the city of Norfolk to put the brakes on history. When we walk the streets, we see history and learn about it, those historic landmarks and more. But if we go ahead and continue this path of telling the city attorney or telling anybody to remove history, by any piece, we are taking away what made the heart and soul of Norfolk as well as Virginia. I ask that you take a pause on any resolution to have history removed at all, or it may be your own history that's gone. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Sykes, Larry uh, Scowls, uh, please come, and uh, you have several members from uh, the Berkeley community. Yes. Um, please come, and, and if you want to, uh, I know several of you have uh, registered to speak, but uh, before you do, uh, I want Mr. Riddick and Ms. Graves uh, maybe to chime in. I know that all of you have signed up to speak uh, about the grocery store uh, in Berkeley. Is that correct? Yeah. Will you all yeah. please stand who's here for the grocery store? Wonderful. It's good to see all of you. Uh, Mr. Scowls, before you speak, I do want to uh, share with you that uh, we have directed um, uh, the manager to, to work on uh, the grocery store. He's working on the terms, conditions, and the provisions. But I'll let Mrs. Graves and Mr. Riddick tell you more about, uh, about that. And then, uh, Mr. Smith, you may want to chime in, but the council is uh, in, in, in complete support of, break, uh, of bringing a grocery store back to the south side. Yes. Mr. Riddick, or Mr. Mr. Riddick, go first. Well, first of all, <clears throat> it shouldn't have taken this long. And uh, the administration has been dragging their feet, and <clears throat> I'm just so I'm just uh, angry that it's taken this long. We're talking about three hundred thousand dollars or something less, and and we blow that money, you know, all the time. And for you, and and then on top of that, I think that what gets me is that uh, a couple of times you guys were, and girls were at, were going to come down, and somebody told you to stay home. George Banks wouldn't have stayed home. Mm -hmm. Horace Downey wouldn't have stayed home. Minnie Madger wouldn't have stayed home. Okay? So what I'm saying to you is that our development department has been dragging their feet. I met with these people from Pickle Wiggle, I don't know how many months ago, you know. But our development department, they they dance to whatever tune they want to dance to. And it's time for that kind of mess to stop, you know. I was thinking of, and the thing that gets me, I noticed Mr. Mayor, my good friend here, 
who I support, didn't expect me to speak like this. But uh, I'm just sick and tired of uh, the black community being kicked around, you know, like it is now. And so one thing I thought about and, and in the morning, you know, when I take my swim and what's been coming to my mind is the Willie Lynch theory, you know, and how we have been divided. We got to stop being, we got to stop being divided. We have to come together and we need to get the same thing that everybody else is getting, you know. Yeah. We just spent $7 million to help someone build a piece of property. I supported it for the uh, probably the richest people in town, you know, yet we can't find $400,000 to feed a whole community, you know. And so you keep staying home. You keep staying home. You should have been down here. This should never have come to this point. So you keep staying home, and you're going to find yourself floating right off into the uh, Elizabeth River. And, I'll, and, and still another thing, too, where is your library? over on uh, on uh, Berkeley Avenue Extended and Campus Hollow Road. That's another thing the administration is dragging their feet on, you know? And so, it's, to me, it's just like being back in the 70s again. And I've seen it all. I've been out here long enough to see it all. And I'm just saying that we have to stop being treated like second-hand citizens or second-class citizens, you know? And so, like I say, Minnie Madry, Horace Downing, George Banks, Matthew Austin, all of those people who fought to get Berkeley where it is. We had that brand new grocery store over there. It's not the city's fault that it, it closed up. You know, that's the grocery industry. But it's the city's fault that it has not opened. It's the city's fault that you guys have been having to go from pillar to post to buy groceries. And it's, it's time for that stuff to stop. like to take a little bit different approach and say um, I in terms of not coming down to council I agree with Mr. Riddick in that anytime you have an issue or anytime you have a grievance that you should definitely um, come down to the city council it is your right to come whether someone says unless they have offered a solution to your problem then it is your right to come to the city council to air or to grieve whatever it is um, that you're that you're dealing with, we may not always agree, but it is your right to come down here. So in that regard, I agree with Mr. Riddick. the The thing that I will say that I disagree with Mr. Riddick on, and is and it has been my understanding, is that there have been some what I would call bottom feeder grocery stores that have um, made um, inquiries about coming into the Berkeley community on the south side. And I don't believe, and, and, and I believe that the administration and economic development doesn't believe that that's what you want. And so in an effort to find quality, um, in an effort to find a um, grocery store that would provide fresh fruit, fresh vegetables, um, and things that other grocery stores do provide, um, I think that, and, and, and also in negotiating with grocery stores as they are suffering in this economy, just like a lot of other retailers are, that may have been what has taken so long in making sure that we had a quality grocery store that came to the Berkeley community. Now, the other, what I will flip back and agree with Mr. Riddick on is that this administration has shown just today how quickly they can work. From last meeting two weeks ago in a presentation where we had no answers to anything to this week where we've got a lot more answers on another situation that we didn't have any answers to two weeks ago. So if you guys can put stuff together that quickly for other parts of town, you can put stuff together that quickly for the South Side of Super War 7. And you proved it and you've shown it to us because you worked really hard and really fast and you turned stuff around. So once you set that bar up there, you got to maintain it every single time. Mr. Um, Mr. Scowl, so the, um, the council has directed the administration and uh, they've been working on this uh, to uh, finish the terms, conditions, provisions of a grocery store in Berkeley. And so uh, we're committed and uh, to making that happen. And uh, But you can make any comments. And I know that others have signed up to sp speak, but if you just want to stand and support um, uh, Mr. Scouse at this time, you're perfectly welcome to do that. You can speak, 
those who've signed up, or you can stand in unison with uh, Mr. Scowl. Speak. 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 Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor and, and, and members of council. Um, again, I'm Larry Scowls. I live at 333 South Main Street, Norfolk, uh, in the uh, community of Berkeley on the south side. Um, and I appreciate everything that you know you all have said. And I, one of my things that I was going to talk about was the fact that we know that uh, you guys have been working on it. Uh, we talked to Mr. Smith, and we have been doing some things in the background. We haven't been here, not making an excuse and uh, not indicting any uh, of the things that's been happening, but kind of the pipeline kind of sucked the air out of a lot of things when we were coming. I came down one night, and, of course, the whole idea was a, the pipeline. But, again, not making excuses. But we've been working in the background trying to check, check uh, talk with other people, other stores, to see what we can do, uh, that kind of a thing. Uh, and we talked to the Piggly Wiggly and those ki uh, kinds of people. Uh, one of our committee uh, members, Jack uh, Daniels, of course, uh, leading this committee for tonight, he's uh, been doing a lot of the background work. So you're right. We should have come, uh, but we're here tonight. But I do want to ask a question, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor and uh, City Council. S what was just said, does that mean that we have uh, – the possibility of store right now uh, is that. Yeah, I'll, uh, Mr. Scouse, I'll let Mr. Smith or Mr. Chalk, whomever wants to. Uh, they're in the middle of negotiation terms, get provisions, and I don't want to get ahead of the manager. But Mr. Manager, you may want to. Uh, yeah, Mayor. Um, an awkward conversation because I would tell you we uh, these are business negotiations, right? And uh, there is competition in the market, and. Um, I would discourage you from talking about deal terms from the dais. I just, I would. Because I don't think it helps us mm -hmm. get a store there. Right. Okay. Now, I would tell you that these guys have been very clear that getting a store there is an absolute priority, right? And so, but 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 this is not the only, call it a food desert, right? That's, that's in the, exactly right? No, I, I get it. We get it, right? Sure. But, but, but you're seeing it in other communities. And so we're, we're dealing with market dynamics, all right? And so I just, we get it. They've been clear. I've been given uh, parameters under which to negotiate, but it would be, uh, I think, um, irresponsible for me to lay out business terms for something that hasn't been negotiated. But. And can I just, yes, Mr. Smith. I just say, we feel your pain down in Ocean View, too. Mr. Rick and I have shared this conversation quite a bit. When the Farm Fresh closed down in Ocean View, there is not one grocery store north of Little Creek Road, which is about 100,000 people live north of Little Creek Road. And there are tons and tons of people who have to walk um, to get groceries. And we have been feeling this for a very long time. We were very happy that Harris Teeter decided uh, to come back in and take that lease. We weren't even sure for a while whether or not they were going to do it. And we're hoping that they're going to open up soon. They first said they were going to open in April and they were going to open up in May. And this has been a conversation that we've held as a council, and it's it's unfortunate because citizens oftentimes think that we can step in and negotiate all these deals with grocery stores, but it's a very tough business right now. Grocery stores are not making as much money as they used to. There's so much competition coming with Aldi's and Lidl <laughs> and all of those places. And, you know, I both uh, Councilwoman Clinton and I got hit, and uh, uh, Councilman Thomas got hit so hard with citizens blaming us for Farm Fresh closing and that Harris Teeter wasn't coming in. Um, yet we were still working behind the scenes and we were trying to figure out what we could do to get a grocery store in there, there because 7-Eleven is not a grocery store. We got tons of those in Ocean View um, and people de do need access to fresh produce um, and fresh foods. And that's what we want at the end of the day. And I can't tell you how many citizens contacted me and wanted to settle for and not to put down other grocery stores, but like save a lot and some of the, the these other ones. And you know what? We could have easily gone out there and done it as well, but that wouldn't have served the citizens well either. So please understand that there are other council members. Uh, that, you know, though I don't represent Berkeley, we feel your pain. We understand exactly what is going on with food deserts, and we're right there with you. Okay. okay. Thank you so thank much. Thank you, sir. All right. Uh, there are others who, thank you, uh, others. Uh, Glennis Tripp has signed up if you would like to speak, followed by Petsy <laughs> Johnson if you would like to speak, uh, Clinton Joyner. Uh, we have uh, Mary Zachary, Kim Miller, uh, all have signed up, and Barrett, Barrett Hicks, I see you in the back as well. So if you, <coughs> anyone who wishes to speak from the names I've called, you please, uh, please come forward and speak if you wish. 
Good evening, Mayor and City Council. My name is Glennis Tripp. I live at 555 East Liberty Street in the Sykes Mid-Rise. Yeah. I'm very displeased because I see y'all tearing up streets everywhere where the city got to pay. But y'all can't put a store in there for us. Do you know those elderly people used to walk to Farmford because it was in their neighborhood? Now, how were they supposed to get groceries with no car, no transportation? You got to realize that could be your mother or grandmama in that same situation, and you all wouldn't like it one bit. So I'm saying, in Jesus' name, work a little harder on me. Tell him all about Mr. Riddick. You know he'll come to the aid. Do better than what you are doing, because he is looking at y'all. Good afternoon, Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor. My name is Patsy Johnson, and my address is 123 Poplar Avenue. That's in Norfolk, Virginia. Uh, I am a senior citizen, and I, I like being independent, as do a lot of uh, senior citizens. And to be independent, I need to be healthy like everybody else. And being healthy, we need a supermarket. We're going to repeat it and repeat it. And we're going to stay down here until you guys give us a supermarket, a quality supermarket. Um, in order to get a supermarket, we want one with fresh fruits, vegetables, dairy products, and meats. When we have those things, we can, um, when we have these things, we can, we're healthy. And therefore, when we're unhealthy, we, we present a problem to the city, the state, and the federal government. And when we do get sick and we're unhealthy, somebody has to pay for it. I don't know. It may be the city, the state, and the federal government. But um, a lot of us have high blood pressure. A lot of us have heart disease, other problems, and we have problems walking and things like that that a lot of you don't realize. And it's a struggle to just to just be around. So um, we have a store and we have a we have a family dollar in the neighborhood and we're grateful for the family dollar and it sells food. But the food, a lot of food that they sell <coughs> is high in cholesterol. And that's not good for us, you know. Also, they don't have competition, so by them not having competition, they elevate their prices. And, you know, they're free to elevate their prices by not having competition. Um, when Farm Fresh left, um, my prescriptions went to Chesapeake, the, uh, the Rite Aid in Chesapeake, and I'm sure that it went to a lot of the other uh, a lot of a lot of the other senior citizens, I'm pretty sure that their prescriptions went all to Chesapeake. I have to go to Chesapeake to get my food, to get my prescription medicine. I have to go to Chesapeake to get my uh, my gas when my car is working. And if I'm not going to Chesapeake, I have to go to Virginia Beach. All of these things I could get in Berkeley. I can't get it now in Berkeley. So uh, that puts, that makes me feel bad. Um, thank you. Thank you. And thank you for listening. Thank you, Bye. Ms. Johnson. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. My name is Clinton Joyner. I live at 1403 Pike Street in the Campostella area of Norfolk. And I'm a, I'm a young man that grew up here in Norfolk. And I think back to I had gone in the Navy right after high school. By the way, I did go to Maury High School in the 60s. And I went right into the Navy after I graduated. And I came back, and there was no supermarkets in the community. We had a wonderful supermarket in the community before I left. As a young man back in the 50s, we had a nice supermarket, the giant open air market at the foot of the Campostella Bridge. And I heard what you all have said. You understand the need that we have in the Berkeley community for such a supermarket. But it's just 
quite a convenience to have a supermarket. It's very important, as the previous speaker had just said, that you know health is of great concern, and especially amongst the black community. It's so crucial that we improve our diets and have a good lifestyle. And we certainly can't do it if the foods, fruits, and vegetables, which are the most crucial parts of a healthy diet, aren't available to the community. I'll think back and I'll wrap it up. As a young man going to Maury from that community, I had to catch the bus to school. And I would come home some evenings, come over that campus Stella Bridge, and I could stop off there and pick up some food items for my mother, a widowed mother who was still raising four more of her eight children. But it was so convenient. And I think of the many nights when we went to the football games, the sports events, and you could go stop there at the giant open air market. You could have dinner. There was a food counter there. You could have dinner. They had a ballroom up there. You could go up and have your social events of the community. The communities were booming back in those days. And it's because of a supermarket that played a big, important role in the community and it gives life and vitality. So I appreciate what you all have said. I know you realize the need, and I'm just so glad that you're willing to listen to us and try and help us out in whatever ways you can. Thank you, Mr. Jordan. You're right. Good evening, Mayor and Council. My name is Mary Zachary. I live 555 East Liberty Street, Norfolk, Virginia. I'm piggybacking off of the other ones. I wasn't going to make it personal, but it is personal. Since Farm Fresh has closed, I've lost 17 pounds. I can't afford to keep losing weight. <laughs> I'm small enough. I'll be invisible in a minute. <laughs> we, need, we need some fresh food and produce over there. We can't keep doing this. We are dying already from the illnesses. Now we die from starvation. It's not fair. I used to work for the city. It's not fair that I work for the city and then I can't get no help from the city. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Zachary. Good evening. My Good name evening. is Kim Miller. I'm a member of Beacon Lake Civic League in Berkeley. Um, I'm really touched by what Ms. Mary just said and my heart breaks for her, for us. Um, Berkeley is one of the oldest neighborhoods of Norfolk and also been designated as a neighborhood of the future. Um, people have lived in Berkeley for generations, and several of, of us who our grandparents live there, we live there now, and we're hoping that our children will in the future. Um, and we've heard from several residents from Berkeley and the South Side, community leaders, um, elderly, disabled. Um, I was hoping some of our single mothers could come, but they were really busy, as you can imagine. Um, but everyday folk um, came up and spoke today. And I know we've done it once already, but if our Berkeley and Southside residents, if you could just stand up again, just one last time. We have a right to healthy food, fresh, healthy food. It's a right. Thank you for standing. It's been a long day, I know. Thank you. Um, we don't want to take our dollars out of Norfolk. You know, um, Ms. Mary, uh, Ms. Patsy said that we have got to go into Virginia Beach and into Chesapeake to buy groceries. So that takes money out of Norfolk. It takes money out of the South Side. That's where we want it to stay. So it makes economic sense that we put a grocery store there. Um, many of us um, do not have access to reliable transportation. One of my neighbors, she takes the bus. And um, when she takes the bus, I'm like, how do you get groceries on the bus? She says, well, I'll just shop for a day or two at a time. And that's scary because if there's, um, we're just coming out of winter, if we had the winter we had last winter, or if a hurricane comes, you know, you could be three, four a week days or a week or more stuck in your house. My neighbor would starve. And we don't want that to happen. So I know that you've been working hard, and I appreciate that. I think we all appreciate the tough work, um, but I believe you signed up for that. But we're getting desperate. So my question, my ask of you this evening, is that you do everything you can to bring a store, 
to bring a store back to Berkeley by June. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, Six. Council. How are you doing? In actuality, I didn't come down to speak on the, uh, the issue of the grocery store, but definitely you know I'm in support. I came more so uh, with concerns, requests, and to offer my assistance. My concerns are based around the oversight of funding that you're going to give to Norfolk Public Schools. Come on. <coughs> we, we, have some, we have some serious issues. Norfolk Public Schools, in, in essence, has rejected one of our own, Ms. Sarah Peoples Perry, who has gone out and found grants, grants set in the excess of $600,000 for after school programs, tutorials, and whatnot. But as I walked in today, there's a grant that's been on the table without signature that may be lost. That's, that's unacceptable. Totally unacceptable. Is that in the city's office or is that in the Norfolk Public Schools office? That's Norfolk Public Schools. I just okay. want the public to understand, and I'm asking. I'm, I'm asking for clarity. I understand. Okay. And I'm asking this body for, to assign an oversight committee going forward as to how resources and funding are spent. This is, this is unheard of but not necessarily unheard of because it has, it's happened to the Southside STEM Academy from the beginning. Yeah. I mean, there was a, a plan put in place that we tried to follow very much what Mr. Smeagol did with his school. Mm -hmm. What's great success. Mm -hmm. But it didn't happen the same way. Something's wrong. I mean, let's, let's talk about actually how it happened just in a small piece of it. Southside STEM Academy asked for it to be reconstituted, meaning start from the beginning. Oh no, that was pulled off the table. That's number one. Then we go to funding. Mr. Smeaker was able to, to go out and find the, the brightest and the best to put under his, in his school system. Campus Stella receives that, that, that young person that had to pay back a grant or whatever in that sense. That mix. There is no way that we can keep saying that we're on the same accord, and we're not. This, this stuff needs to stop. I personally went to Mr. Smeagol and asked him how, how we should go back in, at that time. And we tried to follow that and was denied. You tell me why. Last thing I want to say to that, you know, we saw from that, Mr. Smeagol's, from the day he opened his doors, has been accredited. Southside STEM, what I still call Campostella, because we have not sent the resources, there's no, you can, you can build buildings, but if you don't send the resource with it, there is no way you can call it the preeminent STEM Academy. I thank you, sir. Thank I you, Mr. Question. Hicks. You have a uh, question. Uh, Mr. Hicks. Will you stay for a question, Mrs. McClellan? Yes, ma'am. I, I just have a question. I wasn't as intimately involved in this, but I have, a son, I have a son who attends Lakewood, and I can attest to that how that was remade is going well, and I, I had expected and hoped the same for Southside. We all did. And we all did. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm curious what your perspective is as to why that plan never got implemented, because I would like to say that I think we all thought that that was the case, and um, we would, I know I would support if it could be considered again. And again, I come back to the lack of resources, and that's, again, why I'm asking for this body to, to put together a committee that actually wa watch any funds that the, that the city is going to give to the, the school board or to the schools so we'll know where these resources are going. Yes, sir. I mean, we keep saying that they're getting down to where they should go. Our auditor is sitting right back there, yes, and I just gave her a, a look. And I will tell you, Mr. Hicks, in our budget, 
we have a capital improvement, a CIP item for money going to the schools. And right. in it, it says that they have to provide us with details as to where those monies have been spent. We did not receive that last year. We need to receive it this year, and we need to understand, as you were saying. And, and that's what I'm talking about, ma'am. I, I, I am just so taken aback because what I've found, when you give these children, I don't care what children are, if you give them the proper resources, they will far exceed the expectations. And I'll take you back, and I'll take a few more minutes. I'll take you back to the Southside STEM Academy when these children won that underwater robotics mm -hmm. back to back. Mm -hmm. And that's because they got resources from the Navy that came in to help and whatnot. But more so with this thing was with this grant that I'm talking about that Ms. Peoples has put forward. This grant has provided up, upwards of $200,000 for the last three years. And she put the continuum to go forward without signature when I walked in the door tonight mm -hmm. that would have offered another 600000 for the next three years. Somebody needs to be held accountable. And I'm not just talking about Dr. Boone. I'm talking about even that body. We all know that they've been doing some crazy stuff that I have never seen before from a body in this city. Outward. I would say that if it's a grant application, <clears throat> That is an administration issue, and that needs to be signed by the administration. And we will follow up and, and ask the questions. I know that um, if I could stay and talk with you, I'd be happy I, to I, ask questions. I would questions. love to. Uh, again, um, I've been off the. My, I've been taking care of some family members, but they've told me that actually my my brother, who has cerebral palsy and is mentally handicapped, he watched this body and school board himself, and said, "Bruh." They need your help. Go back to work. That's why I'm here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hicks. Uh, Mrs. Graves? I would just like to say, um, yeah, I'm still on. Okay, um, one of the things that we often talk about is um, a new economy, and we talk about opportunities. And as I sit and Stem. listen to, no, 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 this doesn't have anything to do with the schools. But as I sit and listen to, um, the residents talk about the lack of availability of fresh produce and grocery. I would like to offer perhaps to um, individuals who may be entrepreneurial in spirit, and I'm not, and I'm not saying this, you know, directed to you, but in terms of individuals who may be entrepreneurial in spirit, who may may be in this room or who may be listening. When there are food deserts, like there are um, on the south side, and we have residents who are in need of fresh fruit and groceries, it seems like there is an entrepreneurial opportunity for delivery, a, a local Amazon-type situation, if you will, maybe, for some young person, some millennial, some somebody who can take an opportunity that there is a, businesses are built from a need, an opportunity, and an idea. So we got a need. We need. We got residents who need fresh fruit, fresh vegetables. Someone to possibly do their shopping if they're unable to get to wherever it is. Someone to perhaps pick up their um, prescriptions. I don't know what the law is about all that kind of stuff, but but you get what I'm saying. So we have a need, we have an opportunity, and so now an entrepreneur at heart may be able to for for a slight fee. It's not going to be free, but for a slight fee, if you can bundle opportunities together of residents who are who have similar needs, there might be an opportunity for someone to maybe create a local. Amazon, a Norfazon, a Southazon, or something or another like that, that, you know, because what I, what I can say to you is what I hear and what I see in analysis um, that we get not only from our economic development offices, but when I go to conferences and talk to other individuals who have um, communities who have food deserts and things like that, you, it may seem like you're the only one, but across the country, you're not the only one. And with retail flailing and falling apart the way that it is, you don't want to starve because retail can't get their act together. And so there may be an opportunity there that could come out of this that could fulfill a need 
um, to the community and not just this community, Ocean View and other communities. We had a, um, um, what was it that came uh, out of Five Points? Um, the grocery store, the Fresh Pride, that closed in Five Points. And the closest grocery store was the Super K, and now that's there's an Aldi's, but that's all the way on Military Highway. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, there's need and there's opportunity if there are folks who have an entrepreneurial spirit, and, and it doesn't seem like it takes a whole lot of startup capital to be able to go buy groceries and fruits and vegetables and deliver them properly and appropriately to the folks who need them. It's not a fix-all solution, but there, to me, there seems like there might be an opportunity there if there are some entrepreneurial-minded people either here or who are listening to be able to help provide that need. That's all. Okay. All right. All right, Daniel again. This is it. <laughs> okay. My name is Danny Lee again. Uh, I live at, at 3844 Dare Circle. Um, I've come in a number of times, uh, and tonight I want to address my concern to Mayor Alexander. Uh, when he came on board, you know, he promised us an, uh, an honest uh, administration, a transparent administration, a fair administration. Uh, and he put together, as I have mentioned to you on, on a number of occasions, uh, rules and regulations uh, that he would implement. Now, in those rules and regulations on page 8, as I have previously mentioned, there are 12 sentences uh, which indicates that the mayor and the council have the power to eliminate freedom of speech for the people in the city of Norfolk. Uh, when I read this, I was rather puzzled and amazed because actually these 12 uh, lines actually came from Mayor Paul Frame's administration. Now, rather than come up here and challenge the mayor, he was new, uh, I waited and I had the courtesy that after a council meeting, I went up to Mr. Alexander and I said, Sir, I said, why is this section part of your rules and regulations? Now, as usual, uh, he's a very skilled politician and he looked at me right in the eye and he said, Danny, I'm not going to ever have anybody who walks up to this podium arrested. And he walked out. He left me kind of befuddled. It was a, a usual political two-step. I didn't ask him whether he was going to have anybody arrested. I asked him, why is this section in here that says that you have the right and the council has the right to strip the people who walk to this podium their right to be heard? Uh, since then, I've got no answer uh, from either the council uh, or from the mayor itself. And it bothers me a great deal. Uh, it can easily be removed and should not be part of the rules and regulations and conduct of this council. Uh, everybody should have, feel they have the freedom to come up here and present their views uh, in a respectful uh, but an intelligent way. And again, I would ask two things. Number one, that you remove... Uh, the this section from your rules and regulations, which you can easily do. And secondly, please stop giving me the political two-step that most of you do. You pat me on the head like I'm a nice old man, send me on my way, and hope that death will do what you can't do is get rid of me. Thank you, David, for coming. <laughs>